Hello and welcome to episode 62 of Pentagon for Gold, where today we're going to be playing in the final of the Campionato Paulista Secreti Serie A 1 final first leg and second leg against, I think it's Guarini, or Guarani, yes. Um, now, recently we've been in pretty good form. In fact, when I say pretty good, we've been in outstanding form. Beats Paul 7-0, I'm not sure which team that is. I think Pontefracto or something is that team, and we beat them 2-0. We then won on penalties against Palmarias, and uh, it wasn't looking like we were going to. We did get to the point where we had to score to avoid losing, but we managed it. And then we beat Belgrano with a with a weakened team, actually, a backup team, really. 5-1, and thoroughly dominated that game. Now, uh, Guarani, uh, we are playing against today. They... I'm surprised they did so well in this tournament because they I think they're predicted to finish about 14th, yes. And uh yeah, they I mean they have been in in the league for a few years now, 5 years, but actually they started started in mid table in the in the in the second division in uh, in this save. So it's quite impressive that they've got here and they're doing well. As it happens, we're also the favourites to win the lead now. Um, we've now gone to 9-5 to five odds with 2-1 to one for Flamengo. And if you look at the top 11, we've got 7 out of 11 of them. Sakai is actually wanted by Spurs now. Robert and Genovaldo, the Vasco da Gama pairing at centre-back, are still there. And then Maguila at, at CEC, which I believe is Cruzeiro. And we fell out the rest of the team, so it's quite exciting. And uh, yeah, it's a really good sign that we could do some damage this year and perhaps even get this part of the save done in one year. I don't know whether I'll be wanting to move on straight away at that point or, or what, because I think managing in Brazil can be quite fun, but there are quite a lot of games. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but also, while I was uh, sort of looking a bit more into the history of Sao Paulo, I was having a look at some of the players that they'd had, because I could only think of Lucas uh, when... Uh, when I mentioned it the other day. And uh, as it happens, obviously Danny Alves is there right now in real life. Um, he is, I think, playing in mid midfield. He was, of course, a right back for Barcelona for most of his, his career, but uh, certainly an attacking one. And he seems to be playing in midfield for Sao Paulo and doing pretty well. Um, they've also had the likes of Kaká, Rivaldo, Militao, Casemiro, and of course, Rogerio Senni, who was uh, the goalkeeper well known for scoring free kicks. And then also, perhaps perhaps the greatest right back of all time, or at least one of them, Cafu as well, came through at Sao Paulo. So it's not exactly a club that has struggled to produce world-class players. And uh, hopefully we can continue that tradition with the players we get through our youth system in the coming year. We've gone with a pretty strong squad today, and that means that we have Gavassi and Belly starting at centre-back. Belly with, I think, his second, no, third appearance now. Uh, in this game. Rosas and Sydney start on the wings with Thiago Emiliano as our captain today and Franco and Mino both up front. Both left footers as it happens but I think Franco is uh, he's got a pretty strong right foot so it's not really a big problem. Anyway let's head into this game against Guarani as it happens we're also playing the Paraguayan team Guarani after this final in the couple of Luis Doris but uh, don't think there's actually a proper link with them and that's a Brilliant start. Sydney with an absolute beauty of a free kick. What a goal. No chance for the keeper. He did almost get to it, but he'd have had to he'd have had to fly to stop that one. In fact he did he did get to it but couldn't couldn't get the uh get his wrist behind it enough. Altair into Rosas. And he goes down under the challenge of Fuentes, so that should be a penalty think that's a pretty safe bet that it will be a penalty but we'll have to see what's it going to be a referee it is going to be a penalty quite right too Manuel Mino with the penalty and he scores puts it away with no problems whatsoever Apparently he'd been on a bit of a drought at Santos Laguna before he joined me. Maybe maybe it's because he was unhappy they hadn't let him go at that point. But uh, he hadn't scored in 13 hours before, and then he scored a hat-trick in one of the games, and seems to be doing totally fine now that he's here. It's very good to have him back. 
and I think he's probably the best player in the league, apart from perhaps Sukar. So uh, our Santos Laguna team really is supplying this division with some absolute gems. And uh, I think, in a sense, a car leaving for Spurs would be good for us because it means that Flamengo are weakened. But it isn't also great because it means that it would cost a lot more to sign him in future. We won't be able to sign him for, you know, 20 million or so. Um, but given that they've signed him for, for about 20 million, I would be surprised if they let him go for that cheap. This doesn't seem to be much of a competition, this game. Um, I did say I was surprised Guarani were doing so well. But um, we're putting them to the sword. It's Sydney, particularly impressive so far. Attila on the counter-attack. Breaks past Gavassi pretty well, but has to track back. And now Gustavo and Mateus can just comfortably collect that. That was the most impressive thing that any of their players had done up to this point. But uh, even then, it wasn't particularly going to challenge Gustavo Mateus. And, uh, yeah, 33 minutes in. Still 3-0. Haven't scored in about 20 minutes, so uh, need to sort that out. Uh, Belly and Vinicius exchanging passes. And Vinicius breaks past his man, finds to Thiago Emiliano. And now Sydney again. Gets. Is that a hat-trick for him? I think he's got a hat-trick and an assist. What a performance from him today. He's been really, really good since we joined. Very excited to have him. Oh, so he hasn't had an assist, but he has scored three. But look at his stats. Like the the dribbling, the first touch, particularly the passing and technique are awesome. 16 flair. Very fast. Couldn't really ask for much more. I'll tell the boys I'm happy with their performance. Can't be bothered to tell them not to be complacent. I think we've basically got this in the bag at this point. Lucas Antonio into Almeida and Elias now looking forward but Lucas Almeida Antonio can't get to that properly and it's now breaking away through Rosas finds Mino oh that's a link up we've seen before but uh, Mino couldn't get the finish he was looking for Sydney now with the corner kick into the box and it's headed out pretty comfortably to Gavassi Mino and Belly not really tiring yet, which is good. But Vinicius and Sydney are a bit tired. I think we'll probably take off Sydney shortly just to protect him. And because he's on such a ridiculous rate and we want to keep him up there. Now on a 9.8, what a player. Right, time to get him off. He can come off for Otavio Asensau. And Diego Carlos can come on for Thiago Emiliano. And Vinicius can come off for Vinicius Henry. Hey, not exactly changing up the midfield too much there with uh, Vinicius being replaced by Vinicius Enrique, but it uh, does make it a little bit confusing to work out which one is which, the fact that their names are so similar. Diego Carlos now sending it in, and Mino scores despite being 5'5 five five and with 5 jumping reach. That's a good header, but obviously awful, awful positioning from the keeper. Really put it on a plate for Mino. I mean, I don't know where the keeper's going. Clearly didn't think Mino would get there given he was so small. And it's 5-0 in this first leg. I think I'll be rotating quite heavily for the second. This wasn't quite how conclusive I thought this game would be. Um... It's been quite the performance from the boys, and that's really exciting. So let's hope we can go just stroll through the next game. Don't need too many highlights. Just want to get our younger players into the team and, you know, just be able to have a bit of game time. I promised wholesale changes, and here they are. I literally did a full swap out of all the players, apart from Belly, who keeps his place because he's young and I want to get him developing because he's not quite on the level of our other first teamers yet, but he's going to on that level if we can play him as much as we can really um, that means quarter comes into goal Joaquin Ramos Alisson and Vitor Gabriel join belly in the defense Diego Carlos is probably the best player in this team playing in midfield with Vinicius Henrique and then Vinicius and Asensao are on the wings in fact actually come to think of it this ordering is very weird uh, Diego Carlos is actually our striker with Rogers Valdo Jao today and uh, the two Vinicius's are in midfield with Asensal and Jardon on the wings. Not why, not sure why it's showing like that, but uh, yeah. 
Let's go with that one. We've, we're already 5-0 up. You know, it doesn't really matter what happens here unless we completely lose our way. Um, I'd probably take no highlights just to save time. But uh, if we can get a couple of goals, perhaps for the likes of Rodisvaldo Zhao, who's quite young and exciting, uh, that would be that would be good. Ramos breaking down the right-hand side, tackled by Mateus, confidently headed back towards their half by Alisson and now we've made our way through to their box and Vinicius Henrique's shot is well blocked in the end unlucky there and that will be offside unlucky that that shot deflected off Jardin but uh, that's the way it is a lot of these players have barely played so are not in great shape but uh, hopefully there won't be too many injuries today and we can just see this game out in relative ease I might just lower the tempo just to, to make it less likely that we do get injured. Here is Carlos into Fuentes and now Kaike, who I believe actually was... I think he was with us not so long. I don't know if it's the same Kaike or a different one, but I'm pretty sure we sold them to Guarani. So that's probably a guy we've only just sold a few weeks ago. But uh, hasn't had much of an impact so far against us. Belly able to make that one his own. And now Ramos into Asensal. Diego Carlos. Oh, that's a fantastic ball for Rogers Faldo Zhao, and he's unlucky not to score. Jardon perhaps could have shot first time and scored instead, but decided to take a touch. And then the ball got a bit loose. Now Kaike beats Vitor Gabriel and is taken down by Belly. It's been a, an okay performance so far from the boys, just kind of professionally seeing it out as at the moment. And uh, it'd be nice to get a goal or two, but uh, it's not too much of a problem if we don't. Rogers Valdo Jao finds Vitor Gabriel, a bit of space for Vinicius Enrique, and he puts it home. Good finish from Vinicius Enrique. And uh, a nice bit of play with uh, Rogers Valdo Jao getting involved, and then Vitor Gabriel slipping in Vinicius Enrique well. And that's just before half time. So it's now 6 0 on the night, or uh, on aggregate rather. 1 0 on the night. And I don't think we need to particularly worry too much. We've got an away goal, so they'll need seven regardless to go through. And, uh, or to win, win, win this. But um, yeah, we're in a great position here. Vinicius, Ramos. Diego Carlos into Asensal. Not sure that's where he was aiming, but it did make its way there. And Vitor Gabriel now looks in for Otavio Asensal, but it's broken out to Luis Guillerme. And now Attila. And that's a good finish. Past quarter, who uh, hasn't made a save yet, I don't think. Oh, no, he has made one. No, he hasn't, because that was the goal. So, um, yeah, he's not making much of a case to replace our usual usual goalkeeper Enrique into Vinicius gets it back and now Jardin is put in by Vinicius Enrique a goal and assist for him and a good finish from Jardin to make sure that we went 2-1 up again Vinicius a little bit tired so we'll be taking him and Diego Carlos now off let's see what options we have Vinicius can come off for let's get Thiago Miliano some more minutes just to get him fit. Uh, Otavio Asensal will probably come off. We'll get let's get Rodrigo Barrios on. I think we're trying to get rid of him, but uh, yeah, let's see. Let's get Frank. No, let's get Mino on. He can play as a deep lying forward for the rest of this game. And uh, we should be able to see this game out pretty comfortably from here. Once again, we've been fully on top in this game. A bit less so than the last game, but it's kind of to be expected with the squad we put out today. And Luis Guillerme, oh, it's a beautiful pass into Attila. And he makes no mistake with the finish, but he is offside. Vinicius Enrique now. Oh, that... Is that a rare? Oh no, he's not, not booked yet. I thought maybe he was booked. That was why it was showing us that. I suspect now it's just showing us till the end of the game. Because FM sometimes does that when there's a disallowed goal in the 90th minute. 
Attila, who has definitely been the danger man for Guarani today. And that's a good tackle from Rodisfaldo Jao. Quite interesting as well with the kit colours. You'd look at the logos and think we would be the team in white and blue and things, and Guarani would be the team in green. But uh, no, not today. And here we are, winning the Campeonato Paulista Secredi R1. So uh, I'm not quite sure what that tournament is. I think it's something to do with, I think it might be a regional tournament. Um, I feel like the season tends to start with regional tournaments before moving into the uh, Serie A and, uh, and the, the FA Cup equivalent in, uh, in Brazil. But uh, yeah, it's a great start to our time here to get the win in that. Um, not quite sure how Guarani managed to top the league table given their performances in the two finals that we played against them. But um, yeah, we, we've won. So that's very exciting. And uh, the board are very happy. Uh, how many times have we won it? I suspect we've won it a lot. Oh, yes. Yeah. Wow, so they've really not done very well in recent times in real life. Haven't won it at least since 2014. And uh, then we've really changed that in the last few last few years. Um, receiving 693k, not particularly exciting. And uh, yeah, we've won it. So that is... A great start to our time here and uh, we've got another couple of Libertadores game coming up in fact two more in the group stage we've already qualified for the next round and I think we'll get the season started probably maybe we'll come against uh, Palmeiras and then whoever we get in the fifth round the Copa de Brazil we'll see which team we get because I'm not quite sure what the level of teams are that are in at that point if we don't do that it'll probably be Flamengo and Atletico Monero since they are, I think, the first and third predicted teams in the division. Um, doesn't say that there, but I think, I feel like Atletico Monero are, unless I'm thinking Vasco da Gama, I'm thinking Vasco da Gama, but Monero are predicted to finish sixth, so it's still a decent team. Uh, Thiago's now come into the team, the Dream 11. Um, not quite sure who he's replaced. Looks like he's replaced one of our midfielders. But uh, Thiago was actually at Sao Paulo a while back, but we sold him. Or at least the uh, the club sold him before before I did. And uh, yeah, that is the end of today's episode. If you have enjoyed, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel as it really helps me out. I hope to see you next time. But in the meantime, have a fantastic day.